Hey everyone, it's Jenny here at Spruce and Gussied. Welcome back to my channel. If you're a returning subscriber, thank you so much for being here. And if you're finding me for the first time, welcome. I hope you'll consider sticking around and subscribing. I've got a lot of fun, interesting content uh, in the works. So I would love to have you. If you love vintage, if you love resale, if you love collections, if you love nostalgia, then you are at the right place. So I really hope you will consider hitting that subscribe button, okay? So what we are doing today is I am going to show you a haul of Goodwill items that I recently purchased. So if you happen to catch my previous video, I went back to Goodwill for the first time in close to three years. And I'm not joking when I say that, that's the first time I had been in a Goodwill in almost three years. So we're talking pre-pandemic times. Um, I just want to put out there that I absolutely love thrifting. I've been thrifting since my teenage years, since probably childhood with my mom. So I love thrifting. I know thrifting, but most of my inventory that I sell currently is not thrifted. And that's only because there aren't very good thrift stores near me. And um, I don't have the time to be going to several thrift stores daily to find items and that's just for me that works for other people but that doesn't work for me because i know people who go out thrifting all day every day and only find a handful of items and for me personally i like to source online i buy auctions things of lots things of that nature and i do hit up i have one honey hole thrift store that i hit up a handful of times a year maybe less and that's not even in my town i have to travel to get there so that's why um, there hasn't been a lot of thrifting content on this channel. That's not to say that there won't be more thrifting content in the future. I'm just saying that currently I don't do a lot of thrifting. So that's why this visit to the Goodwill was sort of a big deal. So I went last Saturday. I just had an urge to go. I just really, really wanted to go. And I was like, you know what? Let me go back to this Goodwill and see what they have. And, you know... <laughs> Like anybody who resells or does any online research on YouTube, you will probably know that prices have gone up. And that's not necessarily just like Goodwill. That's everywhere, right? That's just inflation. That's just post-pandemic. But I had noticed that even before that, the prices at Goodwill were already higher. So um, I wasn't doing a lot of sourcing there. Although you, you can find good items. Absolutely. You know, you just have to have time or really, really, really good skill set of sourcing in limited amount of times. Limited amount of time, which, you know, a thrift store visit for me could be anywhere for an hour to two hours because I have to be mindful about what I'm buying. I don't have infinite budget to purchase things. So having said that, I already knew pre-pandemic that Goodwill prices had already gone up. And um, so I was expecting higher prices this time around. However, I was a little bit more than than shocked because a lot of items were were priced at retail. If you watch if you watch my video, there was um, right off the bat as soon as I entered at the counter, they had this vintage mid century Picasso um, vase, and it was priced at forty dollars, which is great if you're a collector. But if you're in the business of resale, there's no money there to be made. There isn't. You know, you're lucky if you'll you're lucky to get that online, and then you have to take into account. Um, fees, the time you're going to spend storing it, the time you're going to spend packing and shipping it. So that was a no for me. The other thing I was interested in looking at was the jewelry because a lot of people go to these places to source jewelry. Uh, I would like to shout out uh, my friend CJ. He does only thrifting at thrift stores for jewelry and he finds amazing stuff, but he's in Texas, Florida. He travels. So that's what I'm saying. If you can find amazing things at thrift, if you have the time and the resources and the energy to do it. So he finds amazing things. I think I also saw Kat, the nurse flipper, that she had found some brooches for $2 a piece. Uh, that doesn't exist here. So I went and I was looking at their jewelry section and the lowest price item was $5.99 and every item was damaged. So I was like, okay, well, that's not gonna, that's not gonna fly, you know, five, a brooch that's $5.99, that's only worth possibly $10 or $8 on the resale just doesn't make sense to pick up. So I don't want to make this video about 
like logistics and pricing and all of that in terms of resale. This is more to show you what I got. Um, but I may give you a little bit of feedback as to my thought process with why I purchase things. But as someone who has been selling on eBay since the mid 2000s, on Etsy, on Poshmark, now on my Instagram, uh, in person at a brick and mortar, you know, I'd like to think that I do have some level of knowledge when it comes to resale, but I'm not an expert, at least not in everything. Like I always tell people that I consider myself an expert in vintage clothing. Anyway, having said all that, I've talked too much. So I'm going to show you what I got. I did buy several items. And honestly, looking back, I wish I would have been more careful about my purchases. But since I was filming, it was hard to see what I was really looking at at some points. And now I know what other people who film at thrift stores mean when they're looking through the camera and they don't catch things. So that, that happened to me. So, all right, we're six minutes in. So I'm sorry for the long and true, but I just had to tell you a little bit of backstory. All right, so here's the first bag. And I'll try to go through things quickly. So the lowest price item was $5.99. I didn't see anything price lower than $5.99 at this Goodwill. Again, this is a Goodwill in Southern California. I don't know if that's the case for other Goodwills. So um, my intention on this shopping trip was to find mostly vintage items because that's what I like to sell. That's what I'm passionate about. I do sell some re new, new, new items, but mostly vintage these days. And um, I did find some vintage items, so I'm happy about that. You can still find vintage at the thrift store if you look. But this item duped me. I thought it was vintage. I really did, and I should have done a Google Lens or something, but it's not vintage. But I can still resell it. So the first item is this really cute faux leather mini backpack and i also thought this was real leather like that's how nice this vegan leather is i thought this was real leather and i thought that it was vintage based on the tag so this was 7.99 i think i think that's the lowest price that they have for bags so i got a, i got this bag and then i got this bag which the reason behind this bag is this is pretty much like a faux leather replica of a coach Willis or station bag. I can't quite remember what it's called right now, but that's what this reminded me of. And that's why I picked it up because not everyone is into leather. So I thought this was a perfect vegan leather option. This is definitely vintage. So I'm really happy about this. I will probably be taking this to um, my vintage clothing rack that is at the little shed. So this was a good find. Right. I also got some shoes. Um, I couldn't pass these up because again, they were, they're vintage. So, well, these, I'm sorry, these are not vintage. These are new, but they have a vintage look and they're leather. So this is what we have here. These really beautiful brown leather riding boots. And these were, I believe, $9.99, something like that which I thought was a decent price for these because I think retail, these brand new are like $150 and these are in good condition. So I got these boots. They are a smaller size, so they're probably gonna sit for a while, but they will sell eventually. Okay, the other pair of shoes that I got are definitely vintage and I was really excited about these. So these are by Nine West. Yeah. These are vintage Nine West loafers and they're in a really awkward position so it's going to be hard to show them to you but uh, vintage leather, gray, menswear inspired. These are going to be great for my vintage clothing rack. So I was excited about these. Again, really nice condition so I couldn't pass these up and a good size. Okay. The other items that I'm the next items I'm going to show you, I was super excited about. I hadn't gone in there with the intention of buying decor for for uh, myself or for seasonal, but I did find some vintage Halloween. And for anybody that's in the vintage community, they know 
that finding vintage Halloween items is pretty difficult. For whatever reason, Halloween items are harder to find. Christmas items are much easier to find. Um, Halloween is a little bit, a little bit more diffi difficult. And when we're going even further back, and I'm talking about, you know, 60s and older, even more difficult. This is this Halloween that vintage Halloween that I found is probably from like the 70s, early 80s. But I was really happy to find this. So what I'm going to show you is this vintage poppery candle lamp. This is super cute. They had just put this out that day and it was like under on the bottom rack, like bottom shelf. So you really should definitely look below. <laughs> below is the place where you can miss really good items. So this was the first vintage Halloween item I found. There was another item that I left behind because for $5.99, it just was too small. It didn't make sense even for me or for resale. This I'm keeping, this is for me. So this will be displayed with my Halloween stuff, okay? This other item I found strewn about the store and someone must have just decided that it wasn't worth the price, but I, I knew it was vintage and I knew it was worth it, but I'm keeping this. So what we have here is this vintage blow mold Halloween pumpkin pail. Um, this doesn't have the company name on it, but um, I looked it up and it is, you know, a somewhat collectible item. Now, if I were to sell this, which I'm not, I could probably, I don't know, sell this for like $30, 25 to $30. This was $5.99. But again, this is for me. So this is going to go with all my pumpkins back there, by the way. I got the pumpkin, the new one, and the original back here. And that's a vintage pumpkin too. So this will be all pumpkin out eventually. So I was really happy about this. Someone left this behind. All right. Bear with me. Okay. Next items are for me. This is personal use. And um, I'm not really sure why I picked this up because I probably could have found this at like TJ Maxx. Uh, but I just didn't want to deal with having to go look for it. So what it is, is if I can get it out of the bag. Oh gosh. It's like stuck to the bag. What it is, is this, uh, I already took this out, okay? <laughs> it's a perfume set. It's a perfume set. It's like one of those, um, I don't want to use the word like designer imposters, but I guess it's supposed to be mimicking an Ariana Grande fragrance. And just based on the notes, I knew I would like this. And the reason that I bought this is because sometimes these designer imposter fragrances are really good. I'll give you an example. Years ago, they're not, they, sometimes they're not even imposter. They're like the company comes up with their own scent. About a decade ago, maybe a little bit longer, I bought a fragrance called Vampire at Sears. And it's like something they would have carried that would have looked like this, that would have uh, been sold at Kmart. And I got it on a whim just based on the notes. Well, let me tell you, it is one of the best fragrances I have ever had in my life. And I always get compliments on it. And I don't really wear it anymore because it's discontinued. And if you Google it on eBay, it's about $200 a bottle now when the original price was about five to 10. So that's why I took a gamble on this and it costs $9.99, which is more than it should have been at Goodwill, honestly, because I think if I would have bought this at like Ross, it would have been about that price. So this probably was not a good buy, but you win some, you lose some. That's for me. Okay, this next item is really beautiful. I don't know if I'm going to keep this or not. This may go up for sale at some point. Uh, this is just a little bamboo bag. Super cute. Adorable. Little bamboo clutch. When I saw this, I thought pinup, like a pinup girl would wear something like this, would use something like this. She knows she'd have her little parasol and she'd be all decked out. So that was my thought process with this. This is beautiful. Um, it's like in like new condition. I'm actually surprised no one had purchased this. So I'm really happy about this piece. Again, I don't know if I'm going to be keeping this or selling this. We shall see. But um, if I were to sell this, I'd probably put, I don't know, like a 20 to $25 price point on this. I really, I don't think this is vintage. So I might have to, I don't know. We'll see. 
but I really like that. That was cute. Okay. This is my last bag of items. Oh no, I have a few more things. Okay, this bag excites me, okay? So I'll start with these. These are wrapped up. Okay, what I have here, and anyone with any knowledge of pottery can let me know in the comments what I have here. Okay, so when I saw these, this was after I had done like a second go round of the of the tchotchke area. And if you saw my previous video, it's only four aisles. It's literally hardly anything, you know? So I'm actually surprised that I found anything to be honest with you. And what's funny is there was this, um, you know, when you go back and watch your footage, there's like things that you're like, oh, I should pick that up. Well, there was definitely um, some pottery there. It was probably like some tal Talavera. It was beautiful, but because I was filming, I didn't bother to pick it up. And so I didn't see the price, but I knew it would have probably been like a $20 piece just based on their on their pricing. So I forgot about it. And then later in the store, when I was doing a reconnaissance, picking out my items, uh, I saw a woman walk by with the set and I was like, oh, I should have got that. But what can you do? You know, um, honestly, I'm OK with it because I just don't want to store it in the, for the time being. And that's just my MO right now. Um, I'm trying to be more conscientious about what I'm sort what I'm sourcing. I, I don't want it to take up a lot of space because I already have a lot of inventory and some of this stuff, while it is very sellable, it can sit for a long time. So that's just my thought process. I don't want things like that that are delicate, breakable, hard to ship for now. I may change my mind in the future, but that that's just me. <laughs> Having said that, I did get these which are very breakable, but they're really beautiful and I, I am willing to take the time to uh, to pack and ship these. I'll just keep them for myself. So what I have here is this set of hand thrown. These can either be, I don't know, these are for drinking, for drinking or maybe just like little pots. Well, they are hand signed. Somebody, somebody. These are thrown on, you know, these are hand thrown and my lighting is not doing these justice whatsoever. But when I saw these, I thought maybe Raku pottery. I really wish that you guys could see this better because the color on, it's kind of like have like an oil slick color to them and they're not glazed. So that color is in the clay. So I'm really, really, really fascinated about these. So these were not, uh, they were not priced, so they had to go price them for me. And um, I got the set for $5.99, so that was pretty good. I was happy about that. So I love pottery. I really, really love it. That's one of my favorite things right now to collect. So like I said, if I sell these or if I don't, I'm happy to have them because these are beautiful. So this is a nice find that I got towards the end. Okay, and now... Here's the one of the main reasons why I was at Goodwill. Wait, there's one more item after this, but since this is in my lap, I'll show it to you now. I went to go find a jewelry jar, okay? Because I've seen several videos of people opening jewelry jars, and I wanted to I wanted to see if they had them there, if this was actually a thing. And it is, in fact, a thing. So they have different tiers. The cheapest one they had was $9.99, but it didn't have anything good in it. It was literally like beads, like... I think Mardi Gras beads would be better quality than what was in that jar. And then there was one for $24.99, which also didn't really have anything good. I mean, if you were just using it for crafting or for your own personal use, not probably a good deal, but for resale, no. And then $29.99, and then I think $49.99, and then probably a higher one. I, I didn't bother to look at those. So I bought one. I bought a $29.99. 99 one and I haven't opened it. This is I have a lot of a restraint these days you guys so I I can see based on what's in here that it, this is like a decent jar So my plan with this is to do a video of me opening it with you guys So that should be coming hopefully soon. So here's what we have This was pretty much not this in particular but this idea this concept is why I really wanted to go to the Goodwill to see if they actually had this and they did so I did my best you know I, I know a little bit about jewelry so I did use my knowledge to the best of my ability to gauge if there was something worthwhile in here and I, I do think there are several worthwhile pieces in here so 
if we're going to go just sort of based on if this trip was success based on if I found what I was looking to find, then yes, because my initial one of my initial uh, ideas was to get this and then to find vintage items. So happy about that. And if this is good, then I probably will go back to Goodwill to get another one. Uh, I'm not saying I'm not going to thrift anymore or, you know, anything like that. So I'm just letting you guys know. <laughs> there probably will be more thrifting videos here in the future. I have one more item, but I... All right. So if you saw the video, I have to show you guys this because it's in the video. I picked this piece up and this is one of those things that I should have looked at more carefully. Uh, I still love it. I will probably keep it. Maybe we'll sell it in the future, but it is, it's damaged. So what it is, is this little miniature shelf. I think this is really old, you guys. This could be bordering on antique, to be honest, because these little pots are old. So what this is, is a miniature shelf with all these little clay pots and, plant, and uh, bowls in it. Now, it is missing one right here. And I didn't see it, you know, when I was filming with my phone, missed it, totally missed it. When I was checking out, I missed it. Sometimes you miss things. You can be the most seasoned reseller and still miss defects. So while this is a defect, I have another little pot that I can put here and stick here. So it won't be that noticeable. And like I said, I could keep this, I could sell it. Um, I haven't decided yet, but I just thought that this was a really, really, really darling little rustic uh either mexican either guatemalan maybe some could be from any country in uh, central or south america i'm thinking probably mexico though but this was cute so it was it was 5.99 i think that this is worth 5.99 honestly i honestly do and even with the wear like i said there's a lot of wear on this it needs to be clean it's very dusty this was in probably someone's kitchen for many, 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 many years. So yeah. So is that everything that I got? I think that's everything I got. If I'm if I miss something, I do apologize. But I did want to just come on here and show show you what I purchased at the Goodwill. Uh, and to say that even though the Goodwill is overpriced, and even though they do get their items based on donation, like most thrift stores work. Um, if you are in the business of resale and you have some level of knowledge about what's sellable and if you have time, you can probably go to a place like Goodwill and find items to make a decent profit. Okay, now if you are someone who is shopping at Goodwill because of your financial situation, then I still think that it is overpriced. I honestly think the prices should be a little bit lower, um, you know. We're living in tough times these days, you know? So if you've got, what did I see that I thought was ridiculous? They had a pair of um, Vans that were really beat up, Van sneakers for $20. And I'm just thinking to myself, okay, those are in terrible condition. Someone heavily used those and you're asking $20 for that. So, you know, so whatever, take what I'm saying with a grain of salt. Uh, but my point being is that, yes, there are items there that you can find for resale and to make some profit. Uh, now, to make a giant profit, I don't know. I, I, all of these items that I got will bring a decent a decent profit, uh, but we're not looking at like $100 or anything like that. So, um, you never know. You could find something there for decent pro that for a decent price I could bring you uh, net you a decent profit what I mentioned there was one item that I left behind there was this little chalkware um, skunk not chalkware he was redware and at $5.99 I just could there was no money to be made there so I left them behind even though he was cute $5.99 uh, on one of my life sales I'd be lucky to get I just could there was no money to be made there so I left them behind even though he was cute $5.99 uh, on one of my live sales, I'd be lucky to get like $8 for it. And then the time to pack it and ship it, it just didn't make any sense. Now, if I would have put that online somewhere, maybe $12, $14. But again, you have to sit on it and then do all the packing. And again, those are breakable items. So they do require some level of expertise and care when you are 
packing and shipping. So just these are things to consider, you guys. There's so many things that you can resell. You know, you don't have to do hard goods like this or vintage. You can have knowledge in um, you can have knowledge in uh, in plush in the toy section. You can have knowledge in the artwork. You can have knowledge in uh, just their new clothing that they have out there. You can have knowledge in the electronics. A lot of people make money with the electronics. So if you if you have an area that you uh, feel somewhat confident in, then just focus on that, you know, or, you know, expand to other areas and try little small low value items first and go from there. Now, okay, I didn't want this to become like a whole resale video um, because I'm just showing you a haul here. <laughs> so I'm gonna end the video on this, okay? So this is a little bit lengthier than I had anticipated. I, If you stayed to watch the whole thing, I really appreciate it. Thank you so much for your time. It is a privilege to have you here. Uh, if you haven't, cons haven't subscribed, please consider subscribing. I would really appreciate having you. I do live sales on this channel. So if you are into vintage and antiques, I do one sale once a week on Monday mornings, 9 a.m. Pacific, noon Eastern. And then, um, like I said, I have other videos coming out with other vintage, uh, antique, or reselling related content, content coming. Okay, so again, this is Jenny here at Sprucing Gussied. I really appreciate your time. Thank you for watching. Have a great rest of your day and have a great weekend. And hopefully I will see you back here real soon. Thank you.